Hey, hello, this is Pete. This is my brain Chilio Sylvia. So this is the video of uh, Pete's brain Chilio Sylvia. It's been a year. This is a anniversary video. Uh, I posted a uh, first video about a year ago, and that was, I think, uh, we can think it was a short. And it was just kind of doing some water temperature testing and determining what was coming out, what water temps. So, hey, um, welcome. So this video it's gonna be a quick recap of maybe what's been going on the last year with some of the things I've added and uh, some of my techniques so um, let's do a quick shot so I get my juices flowing um, I'm using A basket uh, these would be ranchilio baskets it's a four zero one zero zero one zero three so this is a basket I'm using 18 grams in this doesn't come with the Sylvia right so this is an aftermarket or not an aftermarket but a, you can buy this um, basket from those baskets in different sizes it's like a uh, ridgeless or no spring clip I've been using this a while ago, maybe last month. Holds up to like 22 grams. I'm switching back to the smaller, the 18. I feel like um, some of this is an IMS uh, basket. Uh, I've got videos using this one. Um, a little too much full body to it versus I'm trying to get back to a little of the lighter, the fruity, higher level taste that you get with the lighter roasted uh, coffees. Um, so you guys are aware so there's tons of different baskets. One thing I would suggest is upgrading to getting rid of the little plastic disc for doing back flushing and just get a real metal one. Again, something you'd have to purchase. Another thing that comes up is people ask me sometimes where I got this. And I think the place I even bought it from at the time has been out for like a year. I've been posting videos using this for over a year. People always ask me, I look it up and they always say it's out and I've looked and yeah, it's out. So I don't know, it's they're tough to find. I think, uh, I don't know if it was a case of everyone being home and goofing around with their machines, but they are difficult to find. A reminder to everybody, or if you're new to this, right, so I've got all these backlog of videos. The Sylvia came at 12 bar out of the box, which, you know, if you're new or old to espresso, you're knowing that's not recommended. It's a little higher than what you'd want. I was able to turn it down inside, have a video on that, where I turned the, the OPV valve down, or they're getting your pressure, your bar pressure down. I'm currently using around eight, which is agreed under uh, the recommended nine. But again, I'm that's let's not get caught up in the details just yet. But that's what I, so I'm going to set it at eight. And um, so that's something that people ask you about sometimes with with the problems that can occur if you have too much pressure. Right, you're going to be grinding finer here in order to get the back. You know. Uh, uh, get the get enough back pressure to keep from blowing through that coffee too quick. You end up over, getting over extracted ground size, which is a whole topic to get into, right? That's this screws on the bottom of one of your porta filters like this. And um, the other big thing on here is the, is the PID, right? And people ask, is that worth it? And uh, over the last year, I can tell you that for using I used the Sylvia for a year without it, and a year with it now. It's definitely worth it. It gets rid of all that temperature surfing. Um, worries guessing at what your temperature is. It's like a uh, Mikey Pipes. If you ain't testing, you're guessing. You don't know what the temperature or anything that's going on in there. It's all this idea of, like, well, okay, I think I'm at temperature now. Yeah, that's, you know, that's not ideal. If you can improve that, why wouldn't you, right? And I get it that you shouldn't have to, or there's 50, but that's not the talk we're having, right? So, the change it is the PID installed it. it's been working great for a year people ask about that all the time that's fantastic and it does work correctly it throws people off that I still use these switches instead of the PID but that's the way this one is set up and that's a whole video and a discussion we can have on that which is great um, so PID did it adjusted the back pressure and these aren't big deals I mean this is uh, I understand I don't feel like I have a twenty thousand dollar espresso machine here what I have is just a machine to make a nice basic espresso at home um, within the range that I'm looking for, right? So let's throw this on a scale. That's another thing you're gonna need to get, right? You have to at least get a scale so you can enter the world of dialing in what you're doing. 
zeroed out using grams. These are the settings that this is set for. People always are asking about the settings you use. And a reminder that my settings here are so unique because it's my machine with my beans. And you just can't. Uh, it might be good for helping somebody find a ballpark of where to get your Breville started, but it, this is very unique to however I've goofed around with the, with the grinder adjustments inside. It's how worn my burrs are. This thing's old. I've been using this thing for like two years too, right? So, all right, so that's 18.79. So 18, it's almost 19 grams. One question comes up often is which of these two grinders or which one do I like more? And a, um, which one works better? What do I like? Yeah, I like, if I'm not yapping and I'm just making coffee prickly in the morning, I like this one for the reason you see I dump it in, it's over, it's done. The Rocky works great, like it, don't use it often. You can tell it even moved down a little bit from, uh, it used to be right here. Um, I, it requires the two hands. It can be sometimes challenging to know how much is coming out with dosing. It's lots of back and forth and measuring. Um, I recently re replaced the burrs in it, did a video on that, it was fantastic. Um, but to keep in mind, the Breville, I don't notice a huge taste difference, if at all. I wouldn't be able to really tell. I'd be, I'd be guessing, likely. Um, so that's something to think about, too. So the Breville works great. Um, something I've added, too, is the dosing ring, which I would use if I was using the Rocky. In a spot like this, I put it on top, use the distribution tool, right? And uh, one thing you don't want to do, I saw a TV, uh, a little one of those news stories they do, the cost of coffee increasing and everything, you know, they showed a barista uh, go from this directly to the tamp, right? And uh, you know that's not something you want to do. We, we know we don't want to do that. We also kind of know you can do whatever you want at home, but at Pete's, Franchilio, Silvia, who I've gone like we said, it's been a couple year journey of getting all this stuff. You don't shake it, you don't pound it a lot, right? You don't do these weird things. Put, put that on there, use the distribution tool, spin and fluff, right? Just break up the big clumps that you're gonna get using these lower end grinders or basic grinders. It's not a huge deal. Fluff those around, then rake it around, left and right, round and round, do a little dance. You end up with something some little flat like that. Now give it a little tap. Remove your dosing ring. You have a reasonably decent bed top, right? We're not going crazy. Calibrated tamper I added, and that's to, uh, again, consistency is a big part of this. This gives you a consistent temperature, right? This is gonna give you a reasonably consistent grind. You're measuring it to get a consistent grind. Uh, tamping pressure, yeah, I get it. You don't have to push hard. You, can do it. you don't need any of this stuff, right? Here, I guess we could go into what do you really need, right? versus things that make the whole process a lot easier and repeatable. The tamp, simple, put it in there. You wanna make sure that it's sitting flush. Use your fingers, you can go around the outside edge, make sure, edge, make sure you're not going at some weird angle. Give it the one nice solid push. That's it, you're done with that thing, right? You get a flat bed like that. Um, I, everybody's crazy for it. I got you know the device that sits on there and spins around and around. I'm, I'm just stuck on how that helps to do any of what this would do at the deep level, how you can put something on the top and spin it and have it rotate these bottom grounds. I don't get that. It may give you a very flat top, but I'm you know I'm missing the math on it, I guess, of what everyone's so gung-ho on it. They want that smooth top leveled, I got it. I just not seeing how it's penetrating or getting deeper into that bed of coffee to do the mixing, you know. I, 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 Again, I'm, I'm stuck on that one. Maybe I'm not sure where to go on that. So, <laughs> we've got our puck. We know our boiler waters. Another question that comes up is 222 is too hot to be running water over the, the grounds. This is the temperature of an outside a thermostat or thermometer that's located on the outside of the boiler. That's not the water that's coming through. Initially, the boiler is holding, it's a single boiler. You're gonna run into this with every single boiler machine. It's gonna hold all that water at a certain temp. It's gonna bump it this way. It's gonna run through a bunch of pipes and fittings, and it's gonna drop from whatever that temperature is. It's gonna lose a little bit, right? But as it comes along, um, it's, it 
the pipes will have been heated up and the water is going to move a lot, a little more fluidly through everything at the same temp or close, reasonably close temp. Um, when it's set at 222, that's giving me a temperature coming out from underneath here. If we were to get my digital thermometer out, 205, 206 range, right? So definitely on the higher side, but I'm using a light roasted um, Ethiopian today that I did at home and uh, try it. You know, that's what we're doing here. So put this guy in. Get questions sometimes about people with water still coming out. Remember, you've got the seal that's up inside there, the portafilter seal. It gets hard. Uh, you have to replace that thing once in a while. Make sure it goes in. Then, when after you do get a new one, make sure it's you know it's snug. It's got to be tight, right? Let's use the scale. Uh, we're going all out this morning, right? Scale. Is uh, going so let's see if we're even in a range here. are 38 39 we just turned over 39 so we're in the zone is what I would call it there you get a decent uh, look at shot there decent crema at the top not overloaded roasted those a few days ago I have five or something so that's definitely on the fresh side a good idea of interest to do is to pull out your portafilter and puck look at the top Look for glaringly obvious, you know, places where maybe you had um, uh, some channel that was going on. That's an wow. That's another big issue, though. If it comes on, you can kind of peek around in here. You may, have, who knows? I don't see big sprays or any. But the people get nuts about that too. Uh, for new people, it's going to happen. It's really it. That's where the puck prep comes into play. Um, don't feel that's going to ruin a shot if, it's, if there's a ridiculous channeling that's something to discuss but if there's a little channeling remember at the end of the day it's what's in the little cup there that you enjoy um, and you're gonna get uh, a lot of challenges to get a perfect shot I think what's one of the things I've heard once or the, you hear these great lines it was people have had very ugly looking shots that tasted great right and you've had these perfect shots that don't taste incredible but I find they usually all taste pretty good, right? I mean, if you have a little flexibility there, I've yet to throw anything that Sylvia's made in the sink and have a repulsed face, you know what I mean? At least if you're in the ballpark, you're gonna be getting a, a shot that's decent. A reminder again, I don't do any of the milk drinks. Used it a few times, just not my thing. I'm into the coffee, I enjoy the bean, the flavor, the taste, uh, staying really just traditional with an espresso style, which I've heard is, you know, we know isn't really an espresso style, what we're doing here. It's a little more flexible. Um, but hopefully some of this stuff helps. Remember, keep in mind, it's been a year posting these videos. Um, if you have a Sylvia, these shots really kind of, or the, the videos really kind of pertain more directly to you because there are issues just with this. Another thing people come up and say, hey, listen, how do you, you know, running out of water is an issue with people on this one, right? And you're right, especially if you're doing this constant flushing and we're gonna like do that to get the temperature down. Now do your shot and you just burn through a ton of water. Whether you think that's wasteful or just a pain in the neck, but yeah, you're gonna have to get a little cup like this, a little steamer guy to fill up with water. And every time when you're done, you may multiple times, man, you may be going through a ton of water if you're flushing it out all the time. So using this at least limits that. Um, that keeps your temperature a little more solid. Your back pressure, you've got to check that. It's not going to do any good for you to be trying to make shots if the pressure is so high, right, that you're grinding fine here. And you're like, geez, I just keep getting this over extracted taste, or I feel like that's what's happening. or or you have a grinder you're saying, I can't get it fine enough to, to use here. Well, if this is pumping out too much, find a way to turn it down if, if you'd like to do that. Um, the bottomless portafilter, I'm not a huge fan on other than it does help my putt prep, but it really came into play 
when or if, as you start to stack, jump underneath here, you can imagine that it starts to become just a little challenging for, for the room, right? You, know, you always see these videos, people turning stuff sideways and twisting, and, and I, again, we're back to stuff. I want to have a nice, easy shot in the morning when I first get going. I don't want to, and I don't always do, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't always use the timer and scale. Once I get this zoned in where we saw it came in at what, 18.8 or almost 19 today, I'm not gonna change that unless something dramatically happens. I'll use the timer to keep in a zone at the most, but often I'll just eyeball where that ends up. Tastes great to me, makes me happy. I didn't get into this in order to be you know, measuring, and, but unfortunately a pinch of it is required in order to make sure you're on the right track. So think about if you have a Sylvia, and again, I'm going to tell you, yeah, lots of input and advice people who don't have a Sylvia, um, but this is more geared towards if you have one at home and you're working to improve your coffee game, that's the information I'm trying to share, or even get back from other people. I get great tips and help from other people. See the temperature's creeping up. We just started this thing up. This is the second shot of the day. Um, we're um, warming everything up. It's finding its happy place. It'll wiggle back to where it needs to be because it's probably overshot a little bit. It'll get where it needs to go. Um, so check your back pressure, right? That does cost, you know, 20, 30 bucks for the, for the gauge. Think about a PID. I think you know you don't want to overdo it, but think in the 200 range. I know that's you know, that's a talk for another video or something we can do another time. Uh, get a good grinder that's reliable. You got, got lots of choices. They're cheap, fantastic. People always are, or often are. You know, for all the advice and the inputs and the people say I do everything, either right or wrong, or however they have strong opinions out there for sure. People rarely are talking. Depends with bean quality, right? How important that is to everything you're doing, the freshness, the roast quality, the type of beans, right? People just bypass that with their, you know, their advice on lots of, you know, these micro issues that they have with how everybody does everything. And then even water quality, right? You rarely hear somebody say, well, listen, you know, are you on a well, are you on city water? Are you using rainwater, <laughs> repurposed, distilled? What do you, there's this, this assumption that people just bypass that, right? They'll, they'll you know, go to a board, maybe ask for help, or you're trying to figure something out, a taste thing. So much focus on certain things. People just latch on to any, whatever their deal is. Remember, this is a whole process that works together. Every part of it's really important. Your water quality, is it worth exploring? Maybe, you'll think into it. If you've, you know, water has a weird smell, a weird taste normally, that's going to end up in the bean, right? Okay, and then if you have a bean that's uh, my channel, one way, another thing that often comes up with peach wind, chili, or Sylvia, is over roasted beans, right? I use a really light, just barely, first through first crack, 30 seconds, 45, you know, a minute, you know, type, depending on different beans that we're roasting. So these are light roasted beans. This is not dark, but is there, again, people locked in on certain things. You have, in my opinion, you have to treat it, the bean level just differently. You can't do this one thing fits all. The tradition of espresso using such a darker roast, and people love that and they're locked into it, but that is definitely a style. If you're not going after that taste or flavor, or not adding a ton of milk to the whole thing, right, later, spinning it off with you're just drinking the espresso. Uh, give yourself some kindness, be patient with yourself. This is a definitely a learning curve, and it's a lot of shots that are way too fast, way too slow. I still encourage you to drink them and kind of learn what that meant and uh, be respectful to the bean and the time and effort uh, that somebody took to get that to this point for you to be able to consume in your home. So anyway, it's been a year. Cheers to everybody that I've uh, met online or at least talked to and, and who's shared information. I've enjoyed it and I hope it's been helpful for uh, some people out there. Um, hey, we even got the distri distribution tool. Remember the homemade, the cork, the little acupuncture needle things, as easy as could be, works great. Uh, would highly recommend, would recommend, 10 out of 10. Hey, uh, thank you guys all. I gotta have more coffee. Uh, see you soon.